In the fall of 1990, 33 years ago, I was the newly named and totally ignorant president of the Europe North area of the church. I'd been a general authority 70, just over 11 months. Barely situated in my new international location, I was then informed that someone named Melvin Russell Ballard was going to be my first contact in the Quorum of the Twelve. That, of course, continued the long-established practice of apostolic supervision of the worldwide church under the ultimate direction of the First Presidency. Well, talk about being frightened, frantic, and having your Edsel crash on the freeway. <laughs> I could have walked under a door with high heels on. Of all the members of the Twelve, Russell Ballard was the apostle I knew the least, having had little ecclesiastical, ex ecclesiastical exposure to him and no personal contact at all. What I did know is that he was one of the most remarkable missionaries of any era in the Church. And me? It had been 30 years since my mission, and I was pretty rusty on my door approach. I also knew that as a very young man, Brother Ballard had been an entrepreneurial whiz in the business and financial world. And there I was. I couldn't balance a checkbook. And I thought stocks and bonds were what they strapped Charlton Heston into on that slave ship. Ben, hurry your heart out. Uh, that night in my bedroom, I dropped to my knees in a state of despair. I knew I was going to disappoint Elder Ballard, the First Presidency, the Lord, myself, everyone in this new assignment. I wept. I was young. I pled for peace and some reassurance. I then heard a voice so stunning that I stopped praying mid-sentence and considered every syllable I had just heard. Like a handful of other similar experiences in my life, I don't know whether it was an audible voice or one delivered directly to my mind. But that distinction doesn't matter. What was communicated was this. Jeffrey, this is my work, not yours. So you rejoice in the arrangements I choose to make. I deserve that. But then I heard the unbelievable. Russell Ballard will be one of the best friends you will ever have in this world. You will enjoy his company and seek his counsel for the rest of your life. That brief, unforgettable, unexpected answer to prayer has been more than fulfilled in every detail a thousand times over far more than I can say possibly this morning. What I can say is that for the next three years, we cherished those long hours laboring together in England and Scandinavia, laughing and crying and loving the work, eating fish and chips on the run, and avoiding lutefisk at Christmas time. <laughs> then, most unexpectedly, I became a fellow member of his quorum, where I have enjoyed his friendship and wise counsel for more than 29 years, six of which I have been at his elbow, watching closely his leadership of that quorum. Even more personally, may I say that 
During my recent five-week hospital stay, three weeks of which were spent in an unconscious journey to the doorstep of death, President Ballard gave me blessings or visited or called the hospital every single day for those touch-and-go weeks while my wife, life hung in the balance. How do you thank a man for that? I have since tried to do something in that way with reciprocal visits and calls to him every day during the last two or three weeks of his life. And thanks to this remarkable family who I love so dearly and who honor me with this invitation to speak, I got to kiss President Ballard's cheek for the last time, just hours before he passed. Like the thousands, now millions, who have been blessed by Russell Ballard's witness of our Savior, I too bear witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that He is the Redeemer of all mankind, the life and the light of the world. I celebrate President Ballard as one who will indeed come forth triumphantly on the morning of the first resurrection. He will do so as the recipient of a gift flowing from the great atoning sacrifice of the Holy Lamb of God, a gift which is the central splendor of the eternal plan of divine mercy of which Melvin Russell Ballard, Jr. has been a special witness and still is. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.